Okay, what I have here is the Victor Victrola 4, the VVIV. This one is uh, October 1917. And as you can see, it's missing something. And no, that's not because I didn't put it back in. The horn slats were not offered on this model for about half a year in 1917 as a wartime expedient measure to preserve materials. So the horn slats that would go right here were eliminated. And you can see the whole horn for a change. It was not popular and they came back in 1918 with the slats. But for a while you could get one of these machines. You could tell them right away when you see one. You know immediately it's 1917. You don't have to look at the serial number or anything else. No horn slats, no cutouts for them. 1917. Now the Victor 4 was the, uh, I'm sorry, the Victrola 4 was Victrola's entry-level machine. It was the least expensive model you could buy, in this case in 1917. And the idea was you would start with this and work your way up to one of the gigantic console machines and uh, eventually an orthophonic when they came out in the late 20s. It was all progressed, you know, progressed up the line. It's quarter sawn oak. This is the only Victor machine that uses solid oak everywhere. It has no veneers. So it's one thing you never had to deal with on a Victrola 4 is fixing veneers because they don't exist on this machine. When I got this one, it had blown its governor apart and uh, I had to replace all the little governor springs. Common enough, that happens. You know, they're not hard to deal with. The original mainspring was good and I've reused it. It has plenty of power, no problems there. Motor was good, no, no met those gears, those springs didn't get into any of the gears, nothing was messed up there. And it has an isolated horn. That means the motor is not suspended in the middle of the horn cavity like the older fours were. It has one continuous unbroken passage right up to the reproducer, which in this case is the exhibition reproducer. That's standard for a four. Uh, you could upgrade them, and people did all the time, so don't be surprised to find a four with a Victrola number two reproducer, a number four reproducer, or even there were uh, adapters to put orthophonics on these and aftermarket ones too. And uh, they're kind of wasted on this. It doesn't have the fidelity for it, but it would work. And uh, it was a popular machine. They sold these from 1911 all the way up to, I believe it was 1924. And this is uh, about as advanced as it got. It didn't really go much further than this with the isolated horn and everything else. This is the motor it would use to the end, the horn it would use to the end, the style of case. They didn't change it. You couldn't get these in mahogany. That, that cortisone oak was all they offered at them. And you can see it has the sound doors. And close it if you want no set although with this model you actually could stick a sock in it because there's no horn slats you could jam a sock in there if you wanted to mute the sound you could the other ones you couldn't because they they had horn slats and they would stop you from doing that and i guess you could probably store things in there too and i'm sure people did but uh i got all together now i had to work on the wood a little bit on this one it was very very dry this one came out of california and i guess it had been in the desert a long time and it had a lot of wood feeder on there and it absorbed quite a bit of it and it's most of its normal colors now back to where it should be. It looked like a piece of old bu old barn wood. It really looked like almost on the verge of unrecoverable for original finish. But it did come back, came back very nicely. I'm happy with it. And we'll play a record and see how it sounds. Let's see, what do I have on here? I have, I've got some loving to do, Warrings, Pennsylvanians. I may have played this one before, but that's all right. Hear it again.
The Victor Four. I'm sorry, I keep saying that. Victrola Four. The Victor Four is a whole different machine. That's an exposed an outside horn machine. Victrola Four. Yeah, I pick these up every now and then. You can usually find them at flea markets and uh, antique stores, whatever. They're the most common Victrola there is. What most people don't realize is that in 1921, when Victrola needed, badly needed, a portable machine, this is the machine they went to to alter into the Victor Victrola 50. Well, the motor stayed the same for the first year and a half or so of the 50s run. They were using the same motor as this machine uses right now. Tone arm, same thing, you know, they didn't really alter, they just turned the spring, I'm sorry, they turned the horn around backwards and pointed it up. The 50 has a slightly better sound because it bounces sound off of its uniquely shaped lid on the inside. So it gives you a little bit more volume, sounds a little bit better, but uh, they kept the same formula, you know, basically same tenants turntable, they didn't alter too much, and it worked. The, the, the VV50 was very popular, even today it's very popular, and they couldn't build them fast enough. I think they had to slow up building these so they could build the 50s, probably everything for that matter. But there you go, the Victor Victrola 4, October 1917. Just as we entered the First World War, you could have bought one of these at a Victrola dealer. I'm going to wind the spring downs, so I'll just let that run.